but we'll all agree the important ones are here right now, right? Okay. Um, we did this assignment in class uh, 15 to 20, um, but 18 to 20, we excused you to uh, go work on them on your own if you chose to. So if you did choose to do that, you still deserve the right to be able to see the answers worked out so that you know, uh, so you know how you're doing. Um, so let me see if I can find a slide with number 18 on it. There's the answer to number 18. You know what? I'm just going to leave that slide up there and start working on number 19. I think that's how I did it yesterday with uh, uh, period four. Question number 19. How many liters of SO2 are produced from the reaction of sulfur with 26.9 liters of oxygen? All right. So how many liters of SO2 are produced? 26.9 liters of oxygen. Uh, one of the things we, 26.9, not 29.6. Uh, one of the things that we said on this problem on last time we were together, Friday, Thursday, Thursday, was that it doesn't say that it's at STP, which it should. Turns out that it doesn't have to be at STP for this problem, but that's not fair. In this chapter, as we work through chapter 12, everything is at STP, excuse me, um, so that we uh, can use the magic number 22.4. Feels like a math problem, so I'm going to make a conversion table. Let's get that chat open here in case you've got something to say to me. Um, and I like to write down my question, how many liters of sulfur dioxide, and my given, 26.9 liters of oxygen. And then I kind of feel like once I put that down on paper, I can take a deep breath in, good energy in, bad energy out, and I'm ready to tackle this in the process that is called a conversion table. We know that the first thing we do in a conversion table, I call it step two, because step one is writing down the given and the question. Step two is get out of the units that they gave us for the given. And in this class, know that we pretty much always go to moles. Whatever we do with the conversion table, 99.9% .9 of the time it's heading into moles. Um, that is where the magic number 22.4 comes into play. And for those of you keeping track of the units, leaders cancel out leaders, we're into moles of the given. Now that we're in moles of the given, we can use the balanced chemical equation to get out of the given and get into moles of the answer. So that's the power of the balanced chemical equation. Real easy one here, it's just one to one. So mathematically it doesn't change anything, but unit wise, it changes everything. So we're now into units of SO2. So my last step is now just to take my moles, which allows me to go anywhere I want to. And in this case, to get into liters of SO2. And that's back to our magic number of 22.4. The units cancel out. And for those of you who want to limit using your calculator as much as possible, because it's way over there, near your desk and you're sitting on your bed while you're doing your homework assignment. For this one, fortunately, you don't need the calculator because it cancels out and gives us the same answer, 26.9 liters, okay? So as we look at this problem here, let's just point out, um, point out at least one thing that's important for us to get from here. So I'm gonna erase this at STP. I wanna point out two things here. Maybe I wanna start by pointing out what I've crossed out in pink, 22.4. The reason why question number 19, I'm sure I took this out of your textbook. I don't know, maybe I didn't. It's hard to say, so many years ago. Doesn't say STP, probably as I forgot to put it on there. But really, if we would have done chapters, uh, no, see, we wouldn't have done, done gas laws before this. So no matter what, it should have said at STP. Once we cover chapters 13 and 14, we're gonna be able to say that it wouldn't matter if it's at STP because while this number would be different, it would still be the same number that we put here. So no matter what, it cancels out. At a different temperature, if you heat up a gas a little bit, it expands, you know that. You heat a gas, it expands. If you put pressure on a gas, it uh, contracts, it gets smaller. So whatever temperature and pressure we're at is going to determine what number goes in there that might not be 22.4, but since it will be the same for both of those, it still cancels out. So this question, that's okay. This question is, uh, is, is saved in that it doesn't have to be at STP. 
Now, that was a stupid thing to even talk about. I just wasted all of our time because in this chapter, let's put them at STP. What I wanted to point out about this problem was that we started with 26.9 liters of O2 and ended with 26.9 liters of SO2. And we never even talked about the sulfur that's over here. Now, sulfur doesn't tend to be a gas, but you know, you can do a chemical reaction where we heat the sulfur up to the point where it turns into a gas and then react it with oxygen to form sulfur dioxide. That wouldn't be impossible. But even if it was a solid, doesn't it feel like, how could there be something here plus this here end up equaling the same number that we had on the other side? The answer to that is, because this is not grams. It's mass that is conserved in a chemical equation on either side of the arrow. And I will be asking you that on your chapter test. Volume does not need to be conserved on both sides of the equation, because if you had a volume of sulfur gas and you mixed it with a volume of oxygen gas, you could actually put them in the same size container and these two volumes would add together to just equal this same number of volume. Gases don't work, the, or volume doesn't work the same way as grams do. So don't let that bother you if it even was a thought at all. Um, I will only ask that question when it deals with grams, grams, grams throughout an entire uh, balanced equation. Question 20 almost does uh, grams throughout the entire equation, but instead starts with liters of chlorine, 16.8 liters of chlorine. And we wanna know how many grams of zinc chloride do we get from that at STP. Oh, nice conversion table, huh? Nothing said they had to be perfectly straight, right? Um, 16.8 liters of chlorine, and we want to end up with grams of zinc chloride. And now we got to get there. So first thing is, once we have our given, our step two, we get out of the units that they gave us and we head towards the mole. Always our safe spot is heading towards the mole. STP, 22.4 liters of chlorine cancels out. We're into moles of chlorine. Then get out of moles of chlorine and use the balanced chemical equation, 111, to get into moles of zinc chloride, one to one. Don't skip that step on your chapter test just because it's one to one. If you skip that step, I'll skip giving you some of your points because this step here is not about the numbers. This step here is about the units, okay? It can cancels out the chlorine units. And then the last step is to get out of zinc chloride unit or moles and get into grams of zinc chloride. That requires us to go to our periodic table. You'd think by now I'd have that memorized. I've seen this one so many times, but I don't. So I'm going to go to my answer slide, which says that it was 136.4, giving us an answer of 102. Before we leave this slide, did you guys notice something? Three significant digits, three significant digits, three, three, two, two. Significant digits will be graded on your test. That was your homework. Anybody have any questions on that before we start today's stuff? Excellent. Here's today's stuff. It is called the mid-chapter review. In other words, it's a halfway point in a chapter when a chapter is really hard and it would be a good idea for us to review what we've learned so far. So just like we did with the homework assignment on Thursday, I don't wanna just work on these and have you stare at me while I stare at the uh, computer screen. I want you to try number one first and then I will uh, help you with it after that, okay? So go ahead and take a look at that. While you're doing that, now the problem is I want to turn, I can't, first of all, I can't use my little computer to, that was my great idea was that while I wait for you guys to finish stuff is I'd start like checking off homeworks, but there's no Wi-Fi here today, right? So everybody's freaking out. Well, I'm not worried about it because my computer's hardwired to the internet, so it doesn't fail, but the Wi-Fi is not working, so I can't do other things. But what I did want to do is I wanted to show you this lab because lab 12.1 is the one that we're going to sign next week. So uh, why don't you make sure you've written down the five point or 4.25 grams below the iron nails and the question mark grams of copper 
And that way you have all the information you need from number one so that I can uh, step out of this. I was just gonna go and see if I have a video to show you. My go-to place is always my website. Even though the website's calendar isn't updated as often as the classroom calendar, but it's still pretty good. I think that we already have the lab on there. Um, there's a video that goes with the lab though. So that's not, I don't want that. I want the video. The video is not found in my website. Video is found in Screencastify. So this video will be posted to you next week. Hey, it's me watching me. You know where I've made a mistake on these videos that I didn't really think about was the fact that I made the lab the highlight of the videos when really it should be the, the experiment that's the highlight of the video and the lab should just be in the corner. But the reason why I'm showing you this is I was hoping to make a solution for you. Oh, there you can see the copper, right? Exciting stuff. Pour that copper chloride salt into a beaker. Woohoo! add some water. Hee hee, come on, add the water already. Stop talking so much. Look at that pretty color for the solution. Yeah, see, just me talking, talking, talking. I shouldn't make fun of myself. Um, there it is, look at that. Let's pause, pause, pause. Where's the pause on this thing? See that? That's the beautiful copper chloride solution. And then we're gonna drop iron nails into that. And then what happens is, look at how ugly it is. This is probably already day two. Um, I, I know, I, I can't make myself pick up the, the beaker and hold it to the camera on a video, but I just wanted you guys to see what was happening in this problem while you were working on it. That's it, that was really all I had to say. All right, what do I need here? I need that. Can I give you, now see, I've just uh, interrupted your solving of number one. So let me give you another mi couple minutes working on that one. I got nothing I can do now. Well, I do have something to do, but it's gonna require me to click off this screen. So I'm gonna wait until you get to question two before I do that. Of course, you're right. We need to balance the equation, don't we? So right away, I see the coppers at two and three. So I'm gonna put a three and a two, and then uh, that's gonna give me three coppers. And did I, I hope I said that right. I was too busy looking out the window as people were walking by. Two and three chlorines means I need to put a three and a two. That gives me three copper, so I put a three in front of the copper, and then two irons, I put a two in front of the iron. Now I think I said everything correctly. Yesterday I went on to a big tangent with the iron and the copper about density and all sorts of stuff. And then I got up and went and looked at a periodic table that lists the densities, and I was completely wrong with what I said. So I decided, you know what, if I'm gonna save these videos, let's save period five's video instead. So, um, 
So you guys are, are the live, rec well, you're the recording. I still have the other one just in case I need it, but I think I'm gonna keep yours. 4.25. Give you another minute on that. I'm just gonna kind of scroll through and see who's all here. Get out of grams of iron, get into moles of iron. That's going to require us to go to our periodic table. I'm pretty sure 55.8. I said that a couple times yesterday. But while it's a homework assignment question, sure, you can be reckless, do your homework. And if you get it wrong, you're not going to hurt anybody's feelings. But on test day, always make sure you use your periodic table, 55.8. And yes, of course, you can use an online periodic table. Will the numbers be different? Not to the tenths place. If you go far enough past the tenths place, um, as they find more and more of the different elements in the Earth's crust, they have to adjust that average, right? Because the average changes over time uh, because we find more pockets of a certain isotope. We're now out of grams of iron. And we're into moles of iron. So the next step is we're going to get out of moles of iron and get into moles of copper. Uh, balanced equation says two to three. Now we're into moles of the substance we want as an answer. We're going to get out of moles of copper and we're going to get into grams of copper. Back to my periodic table, 63.5. And now it's just a math problem. Multiply, 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 divide, divide, as you write that in your calculator. Top three numbers times, bottom two numbers divide. You should get 7.25. Now, let's, come on, let's do this right. I'm going to try it myself. 4.25 times 3 times 63.5 divided by 55.8 and divided by two comes out to be 7.2547. You want to have the same number of significant digits as what's given in the given. And so that means we're going to cut this off here. And the four tells us to leave it alone. So that's how we get the answer 7.25. Question number two. I have a pretty neat demonstration they do at the very beginning of balancing equations, which is what is described here in this problem. Um, you can type, you know, look it up online, just type in what you see there and somebody will have a YouTube of it. I'm not a very good reader. My problem is, is my ADD, as I start reading the sentence, my brain wanders off somewhere else. So when I read a question like number two, I have to take the important information. I like to write it right below the balanced equation. And now those three lines of words that are up there don't mean anything because all the important information is down there below. So hopefully you've written that much down so that I can do something else while you're doing this. Maybe I don't have to close it. Maybe what I could do, be smart. Oop. Hey, there we go. How about we could teach you some AP chemistry while you're doing your honors chemistry right now? Just kidding. I'm trying to find a test for them. So let's give you four minutes working on question number two. I'll try not to talk.
Don't be scared by anything you see on the screen. You will learn all of this, a lot of it this year. And so none of this will be scary next year. Two more minutes. Unless you say, please wait, and I'll give you more minutes. We're in no hurry. And if I'm going too slow for you, please work on the entire review. It's on your uh, classwork resources in classroom. You can pull up the notes or pull up the homework sheet. That good? Question number two. All right, so conversion table. Uh, the given 2.50 grams of magnesium and the answer molecules, not liters. Of CO2. All right, so to get there, we have to get out of grams of magnesium get into moles of magnesium. Periodic table says 24.3. People keeping track of units, grams cancel out grams, we're now into moles. Now we're gonna get out of moles of the given substance and we're gonna get into moles of the answer substance. That requires a balanced equation, which I never did. So I'm gonna go back up here and check it. I would begin with a one and a one but then immediately I can see my oxygens aren't working. So I'm gonna change the MgO to a two, which then means I need to change the Mg to a two. Now I've got two oxygens, here's two oxygens. So I think that that balance is at two, one, two, one. Now I can put a two in front of the Mg, a one in front of the CO2. Moles of Mg are now gone and we're into moles of CO2. Get out of moles of CO2, get into molecules of CO2. That's our other constant that we have from chapter 10, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And we have the units that we want. So now it's just a calculator problem. Okay, so I'm still gonna plug this in with my calculator because we're also practicing significant digits, right? So 2.5 times 6.02 EE23 divided by 24.3 and also divided by two, comes out to be 
6707 or 670, I'll just stop there. And then don't forget the times 10 to the 22nd. So we want three significant digits. So I'm gonna cut this off right there. And by cutting that off right there, it becomes 3.10 times 10 to the 22. Let's see how I did with my significant digits. Good. Question so far on one and two? Question number three. When we get to the gas laws, uh, we have a lab where instead of decomposing lead carbonate, we would decompose sodium bicarbonate because it's not bad for the environment. This lab right here is not good for the environment. But the thing about this lab is it's very, it's more consistent. So it makes for a better lab, but we don't want to hurt our high desert water supply. So we don't do this. Now, something else you're going to notice about this particular problem is if you have to go to your periodic table to find out what the mass of this is, that's gonna be a heck of a lot of work. There's a lot of stuff to add up there. So what happens a lot of times in problems like this one is they just give the molar mass of the substance without you having to do the adding up, okay? So be ready for that because next year in AP Chemistry, they never have you do the molar mass. They count that as something, they assume that's something we already know how to do. And so then they always give it in the problem. So that speeds things up a lot. So that's nice. We want to decompose three grams of this and we want to know how much carbon dioxide volume. That means liters. So let's give you another moment to look at this one. How about another four minutes? 12.08, let's wait till 12.12 or go till 12.12. I still owe you two more minutes, but I'm at least gonna write down some things in case people are stuck. Remember that if you haven't been doing your work, you need to repent of your sins. Right now your repentance is for you to be working on this. But if you haven't been working on these, then you don't know what to do next. Remember the rules. Whatever you're given in the first step, get out of it by putting it in the denominator on the second step. Oh. I know the formula is bigger than PBCO3, but come on, we can't write that down every single time. It takes forever. Of course, I'm going to put the right mass here, though.
the first one, Richard. That dot right there means something. Uh, what do you mean? Is that fine? Glad you're here, though. It's been a while. Hope you're doing all right. Uh, Richard, back to your thing about what you're asking. That dot that is right there is not accidental. It means something. It's just we haven't learned that yet. Um, it means that these two things are in a weird, uh, in a weird predicament. They're bonded to each other, but they're not bonded to each other the way you wrote it out the first way but they're not separate from each other the way you wrote it out the second way. So they're kind of a in between of those two things. It's, it's, uh, uh, it's not worth getting into too deeply yet. We'll talk about it later, but that's why they gave us the molar mass of it. And don't worry about getting something like that on a test question either. There's nothing like that can come up. I'm going to keep the test nice and straightforward. This one, the only reason why I did this one is because of the fact that it used to be a lab. Get out of moles of CO2, get into liters of CO2. Uh, they should have told us that this is at STP so that we could put in 22.4. And then we multiply. Let's try it. Three times two times. Okay, I didn't really need to multiply times two because I'm going to divide by two in a second, but it's too late. I already wrote it down. 22.4 divided by 508.4 and divided by two comes out to be 0. 0.132179. Then with significant digits, I'm going to go with three again. That means I'm going to cut this off to 0.132 liters. 0.26. Um, I don't like what I see here. Here's what it is that I don't like about this. According to the way I wrote this, I wrote this two out in front like a coefficient. So it should be a two and a two. The way this is masked might possibly be massing this as a set of two. So let's not spend any time worrying about which one of these is the correct answer. Let's go with it's a flawed, deeply flawed question going in. We did the process right. Either one of these answers would be accepted if I gave this as a test because I don't know unless I go and actually add this all up if 508 is the mass of just one of these or it's the mass of both of them together because it's possible that this particular compound, this substance actually exists where two of them are stuck to each other the entire time and then breaks up as two carbon dioxides that are completely separate from each other. I don't know the answer to that. I'm not even gonna worry about it. So we're just gonna leave it and move on to uh, the next one. Which the next one is actually what we're supposed to do for homework. Four, five, and six are your homework assignment to go along with the problems that we just did. You're gonna turn them all into me, of course. I wanna see one through six to give you credit. <coughs> but, Yesterday, fourth period, there were people who chose to stay and work on these problems and get them done in class. It's only 1215 right now, so we can keep working. Um, and if you don't want to, if you would like to go finish questions four, five, and six on your own and turn it into me, it's due tomorrow. I will go over four, five, and six again tomorrow at the beginning of the period. I'm going to go over them faster than I do right now, but I will do that. Okay, so your choice. But if I still see names over there in the participant list, that means that I'm assuming that you want to stay and keep working. I'll keep working too. So now it's 1217. Let's give you till 1220 to work on question number four. I'm going to sit here and pretend that I'm a security guard at the bank that just has to sit there or stand there all day with nothing to do. 
it's stair straight forward. Some of you might think, well, that'd be the best job ever. Others of you would think, I could, I'd kill myself, right? So in other words, there's a job for everybody. That's the beauty. There's every type person on this earth and there's a job for every type person. So now the goal is at 14, 15, 16 years old is figuring out what is that job that you could say, I don't, I don't just go to work. I go and do what I love to do. Now, I'm not getting all chewy on you because I like being a teacher. I didn't always like being a teacher. I originally started teaching because I wanted to be a basketball coach. So I thought, well, what can I do to be a basketball coach? I'll just teach during the day and then I'll just be the high school basketball coach after I finish the day. And then I started going through college and I realized how hard coaches have to work and they get paid very poorly for it. And I said, I love basketball, but I don't know if I love basketball that much. And then the other thing happened, which I always talk about. At some point in time, I had a college roommate that got into mountain biking. And my dad had a mountain bike up here in, in Apple Valley. And I said, Dad, can I take your mountain bike out to college and ride with one of my roommates? He said, sure, go ahead. And I went out and did that. And I'm like, this is the best thing I've ever done. This is better than basketball. So once the mountain bike entered my life, the basketball stopped being in my life so prevalently. Good stories, huh? How about you? What kind of stories you got? One point. Uh, it could be. That, you know what? That sounds about right. Very good. I'm a minute ahead of time, so I, I better stop. I'm not sure I put a question mark there. I meant to put a grams. I mean, you could put a question mark there because it is the question, but eventually you'll want to erase it to get it out of your way because you're going to answer the question. All right, 1220, I can start working unless somebody wants me to slow down. Excellent, that's a great idea. Um, in fact, you know, right now there's a big push with the self-driving cars, right? So think about the, think about the um, engineering that's going to go into having, a, you know, because now you have to have a semi-artificial intelligence. So you're having software. So people who are into computers and software and all that have to be able to work perfectly with the automotive industry and make everything uh, kind of go together. And then meanwhile, there's still people who need to be designing what the cars look like, right? So I think that like uh, you and Nick are always looking at your different kind of cars and you're, uh, I think that there's something about the, you know, you're interested in the engine side of it too, but also probably the style of the cars too. So um, yeah, that's a great idea. Um, the top engineers in this world don't go work for NASA. The top engineers in this world go work for the car companies. That's, that's the place that hires the best. Uh, we're still at 55.8. And then get out of moles of iron and get into moles of copper. We're still at two to three. And then last step is get out of moles of copper and get into grams of copper, 63.5. Multiply all those on your calculator. I do not have an answer slide for this. So therefore we do need to make sure that we're doing this right. So one times three times 63.5 divided by 55.8 and divided by two comes out to be 1.706989. And then if we cut this off at three significant digits, like 1.00, we're going to get 1.71. So yes, Richard, you were correct. 
Question number five. Four minutes on that one. It's 12.22, 12.26, we'll do number five. Two more minutes, unless you want more. I don't know what to tell you. Sometimes, I don't know if it's a Zoom problem, a Wi-Fi problem, an internet problem. Hopefully you can hear just enough. If not, remember they do record these. So if there's something that didn't make sense and you wanna go back and um, clarify, you can always uh, re, uh, watch the recording later. The recordings, I send them to you uh, as a link on Classroom, but then I also then take that link and actually upload the videos onto my website. So uh, earlier when I was on my website and I said to you, I don't have the video, it's just not there yet. Uh, it'll be there by the time it posts to, you know what, it might already be there. Hey, we've got something to waste time for doing, you know what, we'll waste the time for number six. I'll check to see if the video is already there because I was supposed to start by this time. All right, so we're going from atoms of magnesium all the way over to molecules of carbon dioxide. So that means that we're gonna get out of atoms and we're gonna get into moles. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Remember that a mole is a number of particles. So therefore really a balanced chemical equation is not just a mole ratio. It really also is a number of particles ratio. So this question, almost doesn't need a conversion table in order to solve it. But don't worry, because on your test, I won't give you one like this where you can do that. I'm going to give you problems where you need to write the whole conversion table. I might give you one with liters to liters and allow you to not show your work. Because some of you, your intuition would be correct on, the, on following through the problem. But one like this one on the test um, won't 
be there like this. It'll be more like the one that we saw for number two. We're now out of atoms of magnesium. We're now into moles of magnesium and we're gonna move over to moles of carbon dioxide. The balanced equation says two to one. And now that we're into moles of carbon dioxide, my last step is to get out of moles of carbon dioxide and into molecules of carbon dioxide. And that is a 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd again. So for those of us keeping track of the units, we can see that we've got the units that we want. And for those of you who don't wanna get a calculator out, we have the 6.02s cancel out. So really all this is, is just dividing 12.04 by two. And so when you get the answer, the problem is, is it's not just 6.02 because we need four significant digits. This really becomes 6.020 times 10 to the 23rd. Your calculator probably won't show you that extra zero. You'd have to know to do that one, which is why I wouldn't let a question like this show up on a test. I want the questions to look like this so that you know, uh, or that I know that you know about significant digits by cutting the decimal off somewhere. This one here, what shows up on your calculator screen doesn't show all of the significant digits because it didn't need to, it was calculated. And so we don't like that. All right, last problem, number six. While you're looking at that, I thought I would take a quick scroll here. Let's slide this up so that I can leave it on the screen. I can't go any more than that. There it is. There it is. So there we have it, right near the top. And then while you're doing that, I was going to look to see if the lab video. So we have all of these nice little tabs over in the YouTube videos. You can see second sem uh, somewhere we can see second semester. There it is. Second semester of chemistry. Open that up. See what videos are there. Hey, look, there I am. It's me watching me. It's me talking while I'm talking. Uh, I do not have the lab loaded on there yet. So anyway, just I was just checking just for my own curiosity. Hey, look at that homework assignment. We put on that one just recently. All right, what am I doing here? Go to that. Don't forget that even though we finished this assignment, it still is an assignment, so I want it. Um, the idea here is you're showing me that you played along and you did the work, so therefore you are still gonna submit it to me. I will accept two different answers on this one based on number three because my balanced equation, see now look how this two is attached to the PBCO3. I don't know what the answer is. Um, I'm gonna unattach it because any number that goes in front on a balanced chemical equation to me is considered a coefficient. It goes into the mole to mole step three. So I'm still gonna do the same thing I did on the first one, even though I might be wrong then about what the mass of the balanced equation is because 504 seems awfully big. Lead is a big atom. Of course, I suppose, well, you, you know what? That is correct because two leads is 207 plus 207 is already five, four, I'm sorry, 414 plus everything else that's there. Yeah, I think I made a mistake on, on number three on the slide. I don't think we made a mistake in class. What we've done together, we did correctly. What volume of CO2? And this time we're going to start with four grams. I already forgot what I had. Oops. Oh, oh I already went too far. 508.4. How about another minute to look that over?
two to two ratio based on the valence chemical equation. And then last step is to get out of moles of CO2 and get into liters of CO2. We have to assume 22.4. There will be no assuming on the test because I will tell you that it's at STP. Moles cancel out moles and we have all the math we need to get our answer. I do not have an answer slide for this, so we're going to solve it out. Plus the answer slide probably would be wrong. Four times 22.4 divided by 508.4. Uh-oh, typed something in wrong. Let's try that again. Four times 22.4 divided by 508.4. Significant digits, three. And that's that. Are there any questions out there before we leave? I'm going to stop the recording.